Oh, that's Jimmy Spencer. I'm sorry. That was still pretty good. Boy, that, he hung on to that thing for a long time. And what happened was he he ran, he got up the track and he bounced off. I didn't see who that he bounced off of. Well, he went down on the apron of the start finish line to try and pass Kurt Busch and somebody else three wide. That's what started the whole thing, right? Which you can do. Yeah, no out of bounds here. That was clearly discussed in the driver's meeting this morning. But uh, it, it's kind of a risky proposition, isn't it? Obviously. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, that was one, he drove that baby. That was one fantastic drive. He drove it for a mile, yep. but it finally got away from him. Sixth caution flag. Boy, that's down the back stretch. I think Hutch Trickle's fender is rubbing a tire that's causing all that smoke. And Jimmy Spencer, I think, caused a lot of it. All right, let's go back and see what happened. Started off of turn four, coming down the front stretch. And he got Harvick, takes a big run on Kurt Busch. Now he's down on the apron. But the, he tries to squeeze back up, hits Kurt Busch, and I mean drives this car forever, like you said, BP. Well, you know, I don't think he, I don't think he hit Kurt Busch, but watch, it's when he makes the transition from the flat back onto the banking. I think that's when the car got upset right there. He got angry anyway. Yep. And here he goes. Now you know he's not going to be able to handle it on the apron of the racetrack. The bank is. The banking on the racetrack is only 18 degrees, so it's probably at six degrees on the apron there, and he finally loops it. Meanwhile, behind, these guys start trying to avoid the accident and run into each other. Too bad for these fellows. Boy. On board, Elliott Sapper. That's Hart Strickland just ahead of him. Add, add him to the list of those involved. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Bill? It's uh, four tires for Harvick. He said he just got down there. The air got taken off of him, and he tried to save it for as long as he could, and he finally did. They're going to pull some sheet metal away and send him back out. Alan? Caution once again in the Tropicana 400 at Chicago Land. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is your race leader. Less than a lap from the restart in the Tropicana 400 NASCAR on NBC coming to you from the Chicagoland Speedway. Going to be an economy run, it looks like. Some guys just topped off the fuel tank as we got the one-to-go signal. See, and I said it will not end up being a fuel economy race, but guess what? Some guys just made a pit stop. When the green waves, there'll be 66 laps to go. Somebody might be able to make it the rest of the way. There won't be many of them, no. but there may be one. Lead lap cars who stopped under the, uh, the to top off there include Jeff Gordon, Jeff Green, uh, Kevin Harvick, and um, is Elliott Sadler still on the lead lap? No, he's falling a lap down. Watch Rusty here. He's going to want this lap back bad. So bad uh -oh. that he jumped it. Uh-oh. Look at Tony Stewart on the outside. Now what? Now what are we going to do? A lot of guys complained last restart that it was way too slow. They came across the radio and said these restarts are way too slow. Something's going to happen. Well, obviously, the leader is supposed to come by the line first. He did not. Rusty Wallace did. We'll see what NASCAR's opinion is on this. Well, there is a mark on the outside wall of the racetrack. That, that's the point that the restart is supposed to happen. Did uh, Earnhardt Jr. hold him down till past that before he went, or how did that work? That's that's the judgment call. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to take Earnhardt too long yeah. to get back by Rusty, but like and I said, Rusty is a hard man to pass. And it doesn't look to me like Rusty is going to be penalized uh, for jumping the restart, which is a good thing. Yeah, 14 car looked like he was up against the wall there coming out of turn two. That's Stacy Compton and A.J. Foyt's car. And there you have it. Rusty is back. One lap down. Rusty dropped the cylinder that last lap. Two lost the cylinder. Oh, man. After losing the ignition box earlier in the day. Here's his teammate, Ryan Newman, second place car. Matt Kenseth, the fourth. Bill Elliott, fifth. The rest of the top ten are Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, and Kevin Harvick. Sterling Marlin, the silver car, the championship leader. One lap down. 
after pitting over the line in his box earlier in the race and taking on fuel. That's a one-lap penalty. He's back in 18th place. It's Tony Stewart now. He's worked through all the slower traffic. And Tony's... Oh, Rusty almost got the wall off turn two. You know... Okay, Rusty, I started to say that Rusty was uh, running okay, but I see now that he is not up to speed. Tony Stewart has been fast all day long. Is he as fast as Dale Earnhardt? I don't know, but let me tell you so, folks. He got a terrific restart. Check him out as he comes off the corner. He lays back. They're all slow up front. When they go to the bottom, he nails it and goes to the top. Which is legal. Which is legal. You can pass on the right side. Just can't do it on the left side. And he goes by Bush and Kenseth both. Tony Stewart has led 32 laps in this race. He was one of the stronger cars earlier. Since getting caught back in traffic, he hasn't been able to move through. And if you weren't with us earlier in our show, we talked about the fact that Joe Gibbs announcing this morning this team will switch to Chevrolets from Pontiacs next year. Greg Zipidelli, their crew chief, told me today that when they're caught in traffic, that is the weakness of the present Pontiac. Now that he's clear of traffic, let's see if he can run down the Chevy and the Ford of Earnhardt Jr. and Newman. And I think Earnhardt needs Queen Air to be really, really fast as well. So if Ryan gets in front of Dale Jr., it'll see, it'll be interesting to see if Dale Jr. can maintain the fast lap times he's doing right now. And Newman's putting some pressure on him. A lot of pressure. As a matter of fact, last time by Ryan Newman, just a little bit faster than Dale Earnhardt. And Tony Stewart, a lot faster than both of them. And Newman's got to make it, I think he's got to make it happen as quick as he can, only because the tires are as good as they're going to get right now. So here he's taking a look on the bottom. Earnhardt moved up the racetrack a little bit. Trying to get that nose in there. And now we'll see if Earnhardt Jr. can maintain now that he's got to run in Newman's dirty air. In the meantime, here comes Stewart. Yep. Just that little bit of side-by-side -side racing. Let Tony try and close that, close that gap. And that's exactly what Tony wants to see, is those guys racing, because when they're racing, they're not as fast as a car that's going to be running by himself. Last time Ryan Newman led this race was all the way back at lap 56. We're at 2.09 now. That last lap, Tony Stewart was four-tenths of a second faster than both the two cars ahead of him, Ryan Newman and Dale Jr. So he made up a lot of ground right there in that one lap. Hey, Marty, what are they saying down there in the 20 pit? This car, aerodynamically, Wally, is one of their best, actually. It started life as a backup car because it didn't run good. It had one of the worst bodies at Joe Gibbs Racing. So about a month ago, Greg Zipidelli picked it out of the back of the shop and told Scott Deal, the chief mechanic, let's start working on that car. They have been to the wind tunnel with this car. They have made the body much better. And now, by numbers from the wind tunnel, it is able to catch cars much better than he has been in the last few months. And now the key is, like we were talking earlier, if he can get by him once he catches him, there's a big difference because if the car isn't really good behind another car, it's very, very difficult to keep the nose down to pull underneath the car to make the pass. And we talked about Tony Stewart being fast. Well, guess what? Right now, Ryan Newman out in front of that 12 Altel car. He is faster than all of them. Last time by, he was a tenth of a second faster than Tony Stewart and 15 hundredths of a second faster than Dale Earnhardt Jr. Behind these three, it's another two seconds, two and a half seconds now. Back to fourth place, Matt Kenseth, and fifth place, Kurt Busch. Ryan Newman leads 56 laps to go in the Tropicana 400 at the Chicagoland Speedway. And back here at the Chicagoland Speedway, Ryan Newman, the pole sitter, the rookie, the teammate of Rusty Wallace, leads after 218 laps. But hot in his tire tracks, Tony Stewart looking for another victory in this 2002 season. This race far from over. Let's take you through to the field, beginning with the race leader, and here's Martin. 
And that is Ryan Newman, as you say, Bill Weber. The car just a little bit tight, but they are very happy. They do have to stop one more time with about five or ten to go and top off with the fuel. Remember, Ryan is from South, in, South Bend, Indiana. Lots of Ryan Newman friends and family in the stands today. He has never won a Winston Cup points race, but he did win the Winston in this car. Tony Stewart is behind him on the racetrack. A little bit tight for Stewart, but the best of the car has been all day long. He has gotten Pontiac's only win at a track a mile or longer. Third behind him is Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is the tightest his car has been all day long. He described the setup to Dave Burns in our final practice show yesterday as radical, but it's been working except for right now. A little bit tight for Dale Jr. They too have to stop. They are facing gas only on that very last top. Stop. Kurt Busch is behind him in fourth. What a remarkable drive he has had from the back of the field to the front today. He was happy with the car on the last run. They have made only one adjustment today. They took half a pound on the left rear. They cannot go all the way on fuel. They do have to stop. Today burns. Matt Kenseth's team talked a lot about coming in and ducking in before we went back to green, but they knew, according to crew chief Robbie Reiser, that they could not make it all the way on fuel. They were about one lap shy, so they decided to stay out, and they will have to pit again. As for the 48 car of Jimmy Johnson, he, they debated it as well. They came in on lap 183 for four tires and made no changes, so the car is very good, but they cannot go all the way on fuel. They will have to stop again. And there goes Johnson past Matt Kenseth into fifth place, kicking Kenseth back to sixth. We continue going through the field. We go to Matt Yoko. Alan Bill Elliott currently rides in the seventh position. He was complaining earlier that his car was tight. They made an air pressure adjustment in both front tires. But he told Bill, Mike Ford, his crew chief, that the nine car cannot make it. He says, we are not even close to Bill. Mark Martin has had a wild day, ran out of gas, then made a long fuel run, got back on the lead lap. This race restarted after the most recent caution with 67 laps to go. Mark earlier in this race, when he ran out of fuel, went 66 laps. That team didn't even think about coming in under the caution because they knew they would never make it. He stays out on the track, currently running eighth. Behind him is Kevin Harvick. Had trouble earlier in the race, was his highest fifth. That's when crew chief Gil Martin told me, no matter what happens, this is the kind of day we needed. Then Harvick got into a little bit of trouble. Here's what it sounded like. I didn't need nothing. I just went around a bunch of times. Yeah, it looked fun. <laughs> I was at myself the whole time. <laughs> I'm gonna be back in about 20 laps. Just get out of the way. Oh. The good news for Kevin Harvick fans, he did pit under that caution and was told we can go to the end under green. Marty. Bill Del Jarrett is in the 10th position, and earlier he had that bad set of tires that just was not working for him. And while he was on that run, made very slight contact with the wall. Didn't cause much damage, but it did send DJ further back in the field. They have rallied very nicely. They are up in the 10th position. They have continued to fight a little bit of a tight condition all day long. Behind him, Jeff Gordon. We've talked and talked and talked about the 25 winless race winless streak Jeff Gordon is currently riding. They can go all the way on fuel. They pitted last time. Remember we showed you his car being loose earlier? That's why they didn't take tires, because he's better on the longer runs. Dave Burns. Yesterday, Jeff Green saw Bush Series driver Johnny Sauter run a long way on fuel in his Richard Childress car. So they decided to pit uh, uh, before we went back to Green, came in at the last minute, and they can, they say, go all the way. They took on four tires, pumped it full of fuel, made no chassis adjustments. Matt? Dave, the five car of Terry Labonte currently rides in the 13th position. A 113 race of passes his last victory. Jim Long, as Crucci told me, we are very, very close to making it. We are about one lap and change short. If we get a caution, we will stay out and then we can go the distance. Meanwhile, the 13th.